this is Siddharth. Uh, in today's video, we're talking with Naresh Fernandez, author, editor, founder of Scroll, an independent news website. Today, we're going to be talking about Bollywood, jazz, and jazz music in general in India and how it evolved. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Where did jazz originate and who were some of the earliest performers of jazz? So, jazz originated uh, sort of probably at the turn of the last century in um, mythically the American city of New Orleans, which was a port city. And it was a place where uh, African American slaves, uh, who were still slaves at that time, uh, uh, sort of uh, um, would uh, also would hear uh, European classical music and European marching band music uh, in church and on the streets. And because New Orleans was close to the Caribbean, uh, sort of ships would come in and it was also the rhythms of the Caribbean uh, that uh, were sort of swirling on the streets of New Orleans. And these three forms came together in this quite uh, addictive uh, way uh, to create uh, first a form called ragtime and then uh, as it got more sophisticated it became to be called it came to be called jazz some of the earliest i suppose the first superstar of this music was a guy called louis armstrong who was a trumpet player and also then developed a, a, a unique characteristic style of singing Jazz, as I keep saying, was the world's first pop music. So jazz uh, was sort of, uh, it, it came to be created uh, right around the same time that uh, the, the gramophone became to be mass produced. And so these records were going across the world. The second question is, can you tell us a bit more about the early days of jazz in India? If, imagine if you were in a Taj Hotel in Bombay in 1920s, 30s. Who are the bands that you'll be playing? What kind of audience will be there? And what are who are the performers that you would witness there? So, you know, um, as I realized, jazz came to India pretty early, first on record, uh, because uh, this sort of new technology was making its way around the world. But also that, uh, you know, by the 1880s, at least, there was a developed uh, um, uh, entertainment circuit uh, that stretched all the way across the world. And that uh, performers from America would go to Europe, then they'd travel through the Suez Canal, they'd come to India, they'd come to Bombay, they'd travel all across the subcontinent, they would go to Colombo, they would go to Rangoon, they would go to Shanghai and eventually make their way to Australia. Uh, and so this circuit had been developed uh, sort of in the 18, from the 1860s, from the 1850s actually. Uh, there was an early form uh, of uh, sort of popular music in the West called uh, minstrelsy music. Uh, which now we would uh, look at as quite racist. It was essentially white people who would uh, put on blackface. They would uh, sort of use burnt cork to blacken their faces and do these pretend versions of African-American uh, and slave songs. And this became popular around the world, including in India. And I always wondered what it was like for brown people uh, to be seeing, you know, white people in blackface. Uh, but uh, so when jazz became popular, the jazz musicians essentially were already traveling this quite well-defined circuit. Um, and so uh, first there were sort of mixed racial bands and performers who came to India. Some of the earliest ones were... Uh, 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 bands that were performing on cruise ships or, or ships that were going around the world. And they would stop at these port cities in India, Bombay, Madras, Calcutta, to give performances. And uh, African-American bands 
uh, and African American performers uh, were coming to India. So uh, by the early, by the mid 1930s, the first African American band we think was uh, a guy called uh, Leon Abbey, who performed at the Taj in Bombay. Uh, there were already other African American performers playing in various other formations in Calcutta by, by that time. And Leon Abbey uh, had come, he had played in Paris, he had played in Latin America, and then he came to Bombay. He was, like so many of these musicians, a professional touring musician. Many of these musicians came to India and Asia because they were trying to escape racism at home in America. And they found refuge first in Europe and then in Asia, where they were treated like superstars. They were bringing this vibrant new form to people who had never heard it before and only read about it or listened to it at record. So they were uh, sort of really celebrated uh, in, in Asia. And uh, then others came by. There was a band by a guy called, led by a, a cornet player and a trumpet player called Cricket Smith. And then there was uh, a pianist called uh, Teddy Weatherford. Teddy Weatherford was a contemporary of Louis Armstrong, who I just spoke about. He had played with him in Chicago. And he, after he left America in the 1920s, went back only once or twice, I think, perhaps only once, and spent his life, uh, the bulk of his life then he sort of spent in India. And he actually ended up marrying an Anglo-Indian woman and he died in Calcutta. I came across a bit uh, wherein you talk about Bandra's Koli community and their connection to jazz music. So, can you tell us a bit more about that? That was actually just one uh, tangent of the story that there was a family called the DeMellos uh, who lived on Chapel Road in Bandra in a house in which a fancy coffee shop called Subco has now come. And their father uh, was uh, a folklorist who was interested in collecting the music of the community. He would uh, go out and listen to people and note down the music. And he also composed his own songs uh, about what was happening in, some of it was what was happening in Bombay at that time. Uh, you know, fishing trawlers had come. There was, uh, they were now mechanized. He uh, mentioned uh, the RA milk colony, which had just come up and this new form of pasteurized milk that was making uh, milk uh, sort of uh, supply more plentiful in Bombay. But his sons uh, were very interested in playing this sort of new form of music or newish form of music called jazz. And so uh, that was their connection with it. But uh, it wasn't just the Kohli community, you know, sort of Bandra, uh, which had a long association with Western music and Bombay, which had a long association with, with the Western music, mainly uh, first because of the Portuguese and church music. Uh, and so a lot of people had learned to play these instruments uh, to be part of church for choirs and church orchestras. And so, uh, and this was also sort of uh, the way people in Goa began to take to Western music. And quite soon people in Goa and in Bombay uh, who learned to play these instruments learned, uh, realized that playing <coughs> Western music was a good profession. And so first they began to play sort of uh, European <coughs> classical music, <coughs> excuse me, and dance music. And every time a new style came, they would get the sheet music and just play that. And so when jazz became the popular music, that's what they began to play. So the next question is, what are some of the earliest jazz songs you remember, especially in context of Bollywood? So I was quite astonished to find that the first jazz jazzy piece of music uh, was recorded in India in 1926, which is pretty early. It was recorded in Calcutta, but there were no Indians on that record. Uh, they were recorded by uh, a group led by a Canadian called Jimmy Lequine. But that group had people from around the world. There was a, a guy from uh, America, there was a Brit, there was a Filipino, uh, and there was somebody who had been born in Mozambique. 
so uh, it sort of really represented the multiculturalism of jazz you know uh, quite soon uh, so uh, in sort of the 1930s um hindi film composers began to also listen to these songs and you know uh, film music has always been the most popular music they take everything they can uh, to be appealing and jazz was just one more form that they drew from you know they would draw from punjabi folk music from bengali folk music they were they would mix up uh, they would use the basis of classical hindustani classical music uh and so jazz and latin music were just more elements that they adopted so you had songs like sunday ke sunday but also a little later uh, mera naam chin chin chu and all of these things and often it's not uh, just in the in the songs but it's in the background uh, music that you know suddenly as some there's a car chase or people are walking down the street you hear these very jazzy rhythms do you think the jazz association with bollywood somehow affected its trajectory in india and can you think of like unique ways in which bollywood has employed jazz like you mentioned the background scores yeah so you know um, so a lot of these uh, people who were helping create this bollywood uh, soundtracks many of them was sort of they would play in the bollywood studios in the morning or and then they would go and play in sort of uh, dance halls uh, in the evening and i think that you know because of the organic way in which uh, hindi film music was being created uh, they then began to try to do this also in a more art form so i think it was the experience in the bollywood uh, in the in the hindi film studios that inspired some of these jazz musicians to incorporate indian elements a, into their jazz playing in a in, in a more serious way it, it wasn't just happening in hindi film it was also happening uh, in the south uh, in 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 the tamil uh, film industry also can you tell us a, tell us a bit more about the story behind the song Taj Mahal Foxtrot Taj Mahal Foxtrot uh, I was quite uh, delighted to find because I thought it was the first song I found with sort of jazzy song I found that was situated quite firmly in the subcontinent uh it was uh, recorded in uh, 1936 by a group that he was playing at the Taj Mahal led by this trumpet player uh, I spoke about called uh, Cricket Smith and the vocalist on that song is a fellow called Trayton Thompson and Trayton Thompson was another fascinating figure because he had been before he came to Bombay a little before that he had been in Germany and he had played a lot in Europe he was actually also a western classical performer but as the nazis came to power uh, the nazis uh, decided that jazz was impure music and banned jazz and so he was among the people who came to india to find work there's a whole bunch of people who fled europe and found refuge in india uh, many of them were jewish refugees also and the cultural uh, sort of impact they had on india was enormous some of them helped uh, sort of catalyze what later became modern indian art um there were there was a guy called Walter Kaufman who was a western classical musician who created some of the early western symphonies based on indian themes uh and he also uh, created the all india radio uh, kola theme that uh, was sort of for decades every indian knew that and so Creighton Thompson was part of that uh, strand of of uh, refugees and uh but the thing about uh, taj mahal a fox trot as it's uh, called on the label is that it was composed by a guy called mena silas and mena silas was uh, a bombay man he was a jewish trader in bombay who composed a whole lot of musicals and so uh, i was uh, sort of quite pleased to find that this was a song recorded by 
you know somebody who was firmly rooted in india even has had a sort of international performance the last question ha uh-huh. could you please recommend some indian jazz artists that everybody should check out okay so among my favorite uh, performers is a fellow called bras gonsalves who's now in his 80s is a saxophone player uh and uh, he uh sort of really i think brought together uh he brought an indian voice to jazz in a way that uh, nobody had done before him uh one of my favorite albums in which he also performs uh is with uh, a group he and uh, the piano player louis banks put together in the i think late 80s or early 90s it's called sangam the group was called sangam and the album is city life it's quite difficult to get but everything is on the internet and youtube so you can find it there the whole bunch of sort of young performers uh and uh or not so young performers there's a there's a guitar player called sanjay divecha who i really like uh there's a drummer called adrian disuza who uh, puts together groups uh, that uh, perform uh, quite often in uh, a cafe in car in bombay called uh, blue bob oh there's just sort of too many to list now but uh, that's where i would start <laughs>